Now how you go about citing something. To start with, there's two components to citation. There's the in-text citation and then the works cited list. How these are going to look exactly are depending are dependent on the style that you're using. So, and the style that you use is going to depend uh, a lot on your disciplinary area of study. And depending on what it is that you're studying, uh, you might wind up using one style over the course of your whole degree, uh, or you might wind up using multiple styles. Each style has its own guide. So, for example, there's the MLA style guide, the APA style guide, the Chicago style guide. Uh, MLA is used principally in the um, in the humanities. Uh, APA is from the American Psychological Association, for so it's for psychologists, uh, but also some other um, related disciplines. And historians tend to use Chicago. There are some departments on campus that use their own in-house guides. So, for example, uh, history would be one example of that. So for guides to styles that are commonly used at this campus, NUI Galway, you can see our citing and referencing library guide uh, at the link below. So here's what I mean um, by the styles, by this, the specifics of the, of the reference um, will look slightly different depending on what style it is you're using. So uh, probably the most used style on campus is called Harvard. Okay, uh, it's otherwise known as author date. And here we have an example of an in-text citation and then the works cited entry. So uh, the in-text citation um, goes in the text of whatever it is that you're writing. It's a small piece of information uh, that indicates to the reader uh, where to go in the works cited list, which will be the end of your document, the end of your essay or your paper, or whatever it is that you're writing. Um, to find the full bibliographic information. And um, the reader can then use that bibliographic information to find that item themselves if they want to, uh, if they want to go off and read it themselves. So here in the, uh, in the, the paragraph that's been written, we have the in-text citation. And in Harvard, uh, that consists of the surname, here Darwin, uh, and the year of publication, or the date, uh, which is 1859. Now, in this case, because we have an exact quote, um, the page number has also been included. So that's the in-text citation, Darwin, 1859, page 238. So if the person reading this wanted to then find this item for themselves at their, their local library, um, they'd say, okay, well, I need to know a little bit more about this publication. I need to know the title, for example. Um, so then they can go to the works cited entry, they'll, which is... Um, organized alphabetically. So they'll have a look at Darwin and say, okay, I need to go into the D's of the works cited entry. They'll browse through it, find Darwin, Charles, say, okay, 1859. Okay, it's the origin of the species. Um, now I can look that up in my own local library catalog uh, and find out if we have a copy. And if so, uh, where in the stacks or wherever, I can go get it. Here we have the same item, but in a different style. And this is Vancouver, uh, which is also known as a numbered style. And replacing the author and the date in this case is simply a number. And this number leads to the place in the works cited list where uh, the, per the reader uh, can find the full bibliographic information. So here, the in-text citation is simply one, and, um, and then this, uh, the rest of the works cited will proceed numerically uh, throughout the rest of the text. And then the reader will look at the one and then find the one in the works cited list entry if they wanted to find out more about that item. Say, okay, there it is. It's uh, Darwin C, the origin of species. So um, the in-text cite, the in-text citation is significantly different from Harvard. But then there's also some small differences in the works cited entry itself. So you can see um, that uh, here there's the, the first initial used uh, for Charles, whereas in the previous example, the full uh, first name had been spooled out. And that's according to conventions, according to rules um, that are laid out in the style guide. So it's just a matter of um, 
you know, for commonly used items that you're using if, if, if you're studying something where books are, are, are used a lot in your research, um, you know, you will learn these rules. Otherwise, it's just a matter of heading to the style guide and seeing what it is that the style guide tells you to do. So here we have a third example of according to another style, which is MLA. And um, MLA is um, different. Uh, it's a little bit more like Harvard than 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 Vancouver, say. Uh, but it's different in that, um, yes, you have the, the surname in the in-text citation, but you don't actually include the year of publication. Uh, but we have included the page number uh, since it's a direct quote. And um, MLA tends to be used in fields where there is a lot of direct quoting like literature. Um, so that's, you tend to have a lot, the page number a lot. Um, and then again, the surname leads you to the works cited list entry, which will be ordered alphabetically. And then the full bibliographic information will be there. So this diagram indicates to you all the bits and pieces of uh, a works cited entry. Um, and uh, this is for a book. And you can see that for a book, you would include the author, the date, the title of the volume, the place of publication, and the publishers. That's according to a specific style. Um, this is reasonably typical, but there are some styles where um, you wouldn't actually include the place of publication. So the most recent edition of MLA, for example, uh, you don't actually include the place of publication of a book. Notice how this differs from the next uh, example, which is uh, this is for a, a journal article. So a journal article is probably the, the you know the type of uh, the format that is most cited in academia. Um, so it's one that you're probably going to learn uh, reasonably well, uh, and you can see all the the bits and pieces of it here. So there's a fair bit to it. Um, there's the author or authors, the date of publication, the title of article, the title of the journal that the article has been published in, volume number, issue number, page numbers, and then the digital object identifier. So again, depending on the style, um, you know, certain things will change. The order of things will change. In some styles, the date won't be, you know, near the beginning, it'll be near the end. Um, notice some of the formatting. Here, the title of the journal has been italicized. College and Research Libraries is in italics. Some styles will call for that, others won't. So it's just a matter, again, of checking with your style guide uh, to see what the instructions are for how to treat each uh, part uh, of the reference. So in the past, all this had to be done by hand. Um, and this could be fairly laborious. Now, fortunately, there's uh, quite a few tools that can help us to do this more quickly. And um, so if you're using the catalog or, or databases or search engines, a lot of them will have uh, citing tools um, where you click a little button. Very often it's a, it's a kind of a double inverted comma. Uh, that's the case in the, the library catalog and Google Scholar. And it will pop out a, a reference list entry at any rate um, in a few of your major styles. Now on the other side of things, so those are fairly simple tools, very convenient, uh, and you cut and, you can cut and paste what it comes up with into your into your document. Um, there's much more sort of elaborate tools, uh, standalone tools. Uh, they're referred to as citation managers, and these can include EndNote, Mendeley, or Zotero. These are some of the the big ones out there. Um, I'll note that NUIC always subscribes to EndNote, so if you're a student or staff here, you can um, get a download of, of that software. It does require a download, uh, and then the program itself. Um, the basics of it are not really that hard to use, but there, you know, there's you can do a lot with them. Um, now, sort of in between that are some web-based tools, and the one that I really recommend is called Zotero Bib. It's standalone, it's web-based. You don't have to download anything. Uh, and it has a lot of styles. So unlike something really simple like Google Scholar, which only has five or six styles, the TurboBib has pretty much all the styles available. And um, and I do recommend it above some of the more popular web-based tools out there, like Cite This For Me, for example. Uh, and one of the 
issues I have with site this for me is just the amount of ads that are on it. It's just so many ads. It's really distracting. Um, if you go to Zotero Bib, you'll see that there are no ads on it. It's really clean. Uh, and uh, once you've learned how to use it, it doesn't take too long. It's not, it's not that complicated. Um, it's just a really nice, really nice tool to use. So check it out. It's at zbib.org. So if you're using a tool um, to help you out with this, um, it makes sense to do that. It helps you to save you time. But remember that you always need to spot check both your in-text citations and your reference list. You need to copy edit them all and just to make sure that errors haven't creeped in. So uh, these tools are only get as good as the metadata that they have to work with. And metadata is created by human beings and human beings make mistakes. And um, so you don't want those mistakes creeping into your um, reference lists. Um, so make sure um, that you do know actually how to how to reference because you, you are going to need to edit your reference list, even if you're using a tool to help.